Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video jesus he died he buried he rose from the dead for you your past present future sins can be washed away you just have to believe with your heart romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that he died for you believe it's a heart belief and you confess with your mouth to salvation in ephesians chapter 2 8 and 9 it's not a works lest any man can boast take a look at the book of romans paul was a great apostle of the lord jesus christ and he was a great servant and a great example for us. I'm just going to read some of the verses, starting about chapter 12. Hopefully this will be a blessing. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do we have the will of God? Are we in the world? Because if you're in the world, you can't serve Jesus appropriately. Verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so it goes on to say we're all members of the body of Christ. We all have different talents and gifts. And, and through chapter 12, it talks about that. Verse 19, and this is something that maybe is a, a reminder for someone that needs it. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Be rather, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So if somebody's harmed you or hurt you, the Lord will, will take care of it one way or the other. And it's not for us to come back and add our so-called enemies. Because we, as the Bible truly tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against higher spiritual powers. Verse of chapter 13, verse 8, no, owe, owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So when you love each other um, in a Christian godly way, doing the will of God and caring for people the way they should, coming with light feet, with, and, and with correction in a, in a positive manner. Let's look at chapter 14. Let's uh, go to verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, and another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Verse 6, He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks. God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God 
and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Verse 8, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Or whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. So we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not our own. And if you regard the day to the Lord, you regard the whole day to the Lord. If you don't, you don't. Verse 9, for this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both the dead and the living. And so the Bible truth that it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, as is written. And if we go down to verse 11, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So if you're going, to, everyone's going to do that at some point, um, even Satan himself. So it's certainly something to look forward to, that everyone will praise the Lord, our God, that we worship, and we should do the will of God in our day-to-day. -day. I pray for you if you need prayer request leave them. God bless. Have a great day.